Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this wire wrapped bracelet in kind of a chaos wrap style design. I'm sure you've seen this kind of general style around elsewhere in lots of different projects. It's been around for a little while. I am certainly not a great expert at it yet, but I do like how it looks and I wanted to make a piece that incorporates it. So this is just how I tackled this bracelet. I will be showing you how to make one that is roughly in my size, kind of an average six and a half, seven inch wrist. So if you have a slightly smaller or larger wrist, you will need to size up or down accordingly. And as far as materials used, we do have a larger kind of base wire here that we've made the cuff out of. For that, I used 12 gauge wire. I did use all raw copper wire from RioGrande.com. I find that they have the best prices and the best deal is to get it on these spools here. So if you go to Rio Grande, that is actually the item number that you can put in to get this exact thing. So again, I used 12 gauge on that base, and then all the little wraps are made out of 18 gauge wire, round dead soft for both of those. And finally, we are going to connect that 18 gauge swirled wire to the base wire using some 26 gauge round dead soft wire. And I have mine on these little bobbins, you've probably seen that before in some of my videos. I will leave a link in the description section below for where you can buy these little bobbins. Um, totally not necessary for this tutorial though, just throwing that out there. For tools and materials, again I will put in the description section below exactly what I'm using brand wise and where you can buy it. But basically we're just going to use some flush cutters. I'll be using the Zoron Maxi Shear flush cutters since these are thicker wires. If you want some chain nose pliers, I'll be using both the Zoron tweezer nose and these Wubbers chain nose pliers depending on you know how strong I need them to be for what wire I'm working on. And finally you'll need some round nose pliers. I'll be using these Wubbers round nose pliers. Again, links in the description section below. I will also be using a steel bench block and jeweler's hammer to flatten out that 12 gauge wire. So you want to have some of those on hand. And then we will be smoothing out the ends of that 12 gauge wire. So I'm going to be using a metal file and a little emery board here. You can use different grits of sandpaper, a different size metal file. Really just that you have something to smooth down these ends so that they don't scratch you when we put it on and off our wrist. And finally, you might find it helpful to have a tape measure for measuring out lengths of wire. I won't be giving super exact measurements, but again, this will just help you to kind of get in the ballpark of what I'm using to start out with. Alright, so to get started, I'm going to pull out my 12 gauge wire. We will be cutting a length of this to start making our little cuff that this is all going to be based off of. This is a very thick, stiff wire, so it's hard to work with. Um, just take it little bits by little bits as you can if you're having trouble working with it. I'm just trying to get it kind of straight coming off of the spool here. So just pushing it into a straighter position with my fingers. And again, for my kind of average size wrist here, the length I will be cutting is a 6 inch piece. Um, it's going to be about between 6 and 7 inches total length once we finish this bracelet. But as we flatten this out, it will become longer. So I'm going to cut it at six inches. I'm just going to mark with my thumb and snip that off here. Do make sure when you're cutting this really thick wire that your clippers you're using are rated to handle it. Otherwise you can damage your clippers. So before I start hammering out this piece, I do want to get out some of these little wobbles and kinks that are in it because as I hammer it and flatten it out, those will just get further set into place and it's going to be a lot harder to straighten this once I have hammered it. So I'm just going to take a few minutes going over this and making sure it is as straight as I can make it. I'm just using my Wubbers chain nose pliers. They're pretty hefty, so I can get a better grip with it than I could with my Zuron tweezer nose that I normally use. I'm just gonna go all along the length here, bending it back and forth little bit by little bit to try and get a nice straight piece. And a lot of people ask me how I avoid leaving tool marks in wire. I have done a little video just going over some different strategies. I will leave a link to that in case you want to watch that. But basically for this, I am leaving some little tool marks in. Um, it's not going to be a big deal because as we hammer it, those will largely get hammered out and disappear. And also this is going to be below our little wrap design, so you probably won't be able to see any of the tool marks in the final piece anyway. Um, so that looks pretty straight to me. Next thing I'm going to do is pull out my steel bench block. And we are going to hammer this pretty heavily to flatten it out a significant degree. So I like to start on one end and just hammer it out.
Since this is such a thick wire, very heavyweight wire, we're going to have to do multiple passes to get the degree of flatness that we like. And that's usually how you want to do it anyway. If you work in little increments, it gives you more of a leeway to see that it's starting to go in a wrong direction and correct it. Whereas if you just try and flatten it out all the way in one stroke, if you do it wrong, you're kind of up a creek with no paddle. So I'm just going to work at it little bit by little bit, making it more and more flat and achieving the final look that I want. As you're hammering, you'll see that it starts to get this little curve. We don't really want that. I'm just going to stop every little while and correct that curve. It's curving this way as well now. So I'm just going to stop and kind of nip that in the bud, get it back straight again uh, in both dimensions, and we'll go back to hammering. So I've hammered that all out. Now what I'm going to do is pull out a ruler, and I am looking for this to be six and a half inches long. Um, that will allow us to, again, on the average size wrist, have the right amount of opening here to you know, slide the cuff off and on. So I'm just going to trim off these ends where it's kind of sharp and pointy and try and keep it six and a half inches long as I do that. So pulling out my Suron Maxi Shear Flush Cutters, I'm going to take one end off there. Let's see how we're right at six and a half, a little less. That's all right, it doesn't have to be exact. And I'll just snip that end off as well. And now these ends are quite sharp very pointy. Of course, that will tear up your wrist if you're trying to put this off and on. So now I'm just going to take my little metal file and start smoothing that out, kind of rounding it out so that it's more comfortable to put off and on. And I would normally do this over a waste basket because, of course, I'm creating little, little flakes of metal dust. You probably want to wear eye protection while you do this so that you don't get any metal shavings in your eyes but for the purposes of filming, I'll just do it over my desk and then wipe this up with a damp cloth. So just kind of that motion, turning the edges into being rounded and comfortable against your skin. And every few passes, I'm just checking with my fingers that we're creating a smooth surface. After you get the general shape how you want, you would move to a finer grit of sandpaper if you're using sandpaper. Or for me, I'm gonna to use to this move to this emery board. I've got kind of a rougher side of sandpaper here and a smoother side there. I'll just start with the rougher one and then we'll move to the smoother one to finish it off so that we finished off that end nice and smooth and then we'll do the same thing on the other side of course. Now that both ends are smoothed out on this we're going to start putting in the kind of C shape of our little cuff. So if you have a bracelet mandrel, you can do it around that. That would be ideal. I don't actually have one, so I'm just going to start doing it by hand here. I'm putting in a flex, trying to make sure that it's a nice, smooth little arch that we get, just going by hand. And if you have trouble bending this with your hands, you could, of course, use your pliers to grip it and start bending it instead. Just trying to put in a C shape with the end goal that these ends come around uh, symmetrically. So the same length on either side of our kind of oval shape that we're putting. Just go a little bit by little bit here. And this is going to be, this end is too long and that one's coming out too short. So I'm going to adjust. And then at a certain point I will need to switch to my tools. So I'm just gripping with my chain nose pliers here. There we go, something like that, that little C shape. And you can make sure that you're able to get it off and on comfortably. And that works well. This would make a pretty bracelet all on its own, wouldn't it, if you made a bunch and stacked them up. So that is our little base cuff that we have made. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Now we're going to start working on forming all these little loops, the, um, the real part of the design, if you will, that gives it this really cool chaos wrap look. So go ahead and pull out your 18 gauge wire. We're going to be using quite a lot of this, which is why I like to make this in copper. It's much, much more affordable than this design would be in silver. I'm just going to start winding this off the spool. I'm going to cut some pretty long lengths of this. 
Uh, basically what we're going to be doing is working with two strands of wire side by side to create all these little loops. So I'm going to cut two pieces each the same length and I'm just going to start with a 36 inch piece. We might need to add more into the weave at the end if we run out and if so I will show you how to do that. It does not actually have to be a continuous piece for this design. Um, this is actually three sets of continuous loops and then I kind of just attach them together and hid the ends. So I'll show you how to do that as we get to it. So just winding a lot off the spool here, I'm going to cut two 36 inch lengths. So I just go to the end of the wire and kind of run the wire next to the tape measure. All the way up to 36 inches where I want to cut it. And you don't have to cut the exact lengths I'm doing here. Just give or take, we just want two nice long pieces. And then to cut the second piece the same length, I just put the ends together like that and run them along together until I get to the end and I'll just mark and cut it there. There we go. So that we have two long pieces of this 18 gauge round dead soft. All right, so I'm just gonna run these through my fingers a little bit to get some of the little warbles and kinks out that were, are on them from the factory on the spool. We do want nice, smooth, straight pieces of wire. And I'm gonna be kind of straightening them out as I do that. There we go. So just taking some of those little wiggles out to get nice, smooth, straight pieces of wire. And then I'm going to pick a point maybe kind of a third of the way up these wires to put our first bend in. It doesn't have to be exact. Basically, I'm just going to hold these two wires right next to each other. I'm going to start wrapping them up. And I'm sorry for all the little clicking noises off on the right. My wire ends are hitting the light stand that I have here, so just bear with me on that. I'm just going to start wrapping this around to create a little loop. keeping those two wires right next to each other as I do that. And it's probably trickiest at the start here to keep these wires together and seated adjacent to each other. As we put more loops in, that will become a lot easier. But I'm just kind of stabilizing and holding everything together with my thumb and fingers for these first few wraps so that they don't spring and fall apart. So I'm just putting in a loop, little loop-de-loop, -loop, just like that. I'm going to tighten it on up a little bit. So that is the first loop in our little chaos wrap that we're going to make here. And basically now I'm going to switch. I'm going with these longer ends and I've got some shorter ends. I'm going to start working on the longer ends. Basically we're just going to start forming however you like, putting in little loops and swirls. So I'm bending this, these two longer tails off to the left a little bit. And then I'm going to put in another loop going to the right. wrapping it around like this. I'm going to bring these ends over top of our design that we are already making. So we've got another little loop. Okay. And the whole trick of this chaos wrap style is using your tails and wrapping them around to kind of build up these loops over and on top of each other so that you get a lot of little layers of them. All right, so now I'm still working on these longer tails. I'm going to take it up straight again, coming off that way. And at this point, I'm going to loop it back on itself and go over top of this design we've already made. So again, bringing these tails all the way around. Swooping it over. And I'm going to kind of push push it all together to put another little loop in there. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to bring these back around, put another loop going off to the right. Let's get that straight first. It'll look weird if we don't get it straight the 
before we do that. So I'm holding with my left hand to keep this together as I swoop the wires around where I want them to go. And to kind of seal this together, I'm going to take these wires back behind now. So going back behind, just like that. And as you can see, we are starting to get enough layers to where it's starting to look more like what we have on our finished piece here. So now I'm looking at this and trying to decide where I want to go next. I think I'm going to put another kind of larger swooping motion in, bringing these wires up and around. Going back over. And you do not have to follow along exactly with each, each uh, motion that I'm making here. This is really showing you a technique and a style more than an exact pattern that you must follow. These kind of by their nature, every one you make is going to wind up being unique. Uh, you can't really copy exactly how you've made it from time to time, much less how I'm doing it uh, on my screen here. Uh, but hopefully this will be good enough that you can kind of follow along, see the general kinds of swoops and shapes I make um, to get a feel for it. And then you can go from there, use it as a little springboard for your own Chaos Weave style adventures. And here's something you might run into. I've just done this wrap and my two wires are separating out a little bit. If you like how that looks, you can leave it as is. I prefer for my wires to keep lying right next to each other. So I'm just going to pull out my Zuron tweezer nose pliers. Try and uh, shore that down, kind of smush it back together to keep those two wires running right next to each other. And every few wraps as I go, I kind of take a look back, step back and look at the overall feel and I kind of evaluate if I'm accomplishing the overall look that I want to go for with each bend that I make. Um, so you're probably seeing little recurring motifs that we do where we have it swirled one way and then we come up and take it back around in a little S shape. Um, so you can kind of add those little techniques to your tool basket, if you will, for putting together different segments of this chaos weave. So basically we're just going to continue in this vein. I'm going to use up these lengths of wire if I can, just building on this and going up. And then we'll see how long of our little wrap we have, whether or not that's enough to go all the way around the circumference or not. Okay, so I have continued my wraps all the way up here. I'm running out of wire, so I thought I would come back and show you a couple different ways to kind of finish off these ends. Um, so let's Let's kind of loop this back behind here now. So taking this one back behind through that space. And I do have almost six and a half inches here, so I should have cut my wires a little bit longer, so I could have done one long continuous piece. So I'll just leave a little note at the beginning of the tutorial. Um, a little text caption that you can just cut your wires maybe another 10 inches long or so. But I will show you just in case you do run out of wire like I am doing that there is a way to fix that after the fact. Um, so I will just go ahead and show you that and use this as an opportunity. 
Um, every time you make this, you might use a little or less wire length than you thought, just depending on how many layers of swirls you do. So it is always very possible that you run out, even with cutting the same length that worked for you in the past. Um, so basically I'm going to flip to the back side of this. I'm going to find a place where we can tuck our little wire tails. Um, so this one is going to sit in this space right here. I will trim that off flush. And then you can just push him on down. Um, and double check, of course, by running your fingers over that there's no sharp thing that'll catch on your skin. Um, and then we've got another one here, which again I will take back behind. Wrap that back behind. And try and find a place on the back where we can tuck this in. And pushing it, pushing that on down, double checking that there's nothing sharp. So we have dealt with those ends, we have these ends here to deal with. I'm going to put one more swirl in, if I have room for it. There we go. And let's try and see where we can finish these off similarly. How about back here somewhere? Yeah, I think right here we can do. And just like that. So now you might be wondering what do we do from here? We've used up all our wire and it's not quite long enough. We were looking for a six and a half inch piece and I've got just about five and three quarters inches. So let's just go ahead and cut another two lengths of our 18 gauge wire and I'll show you how you can kind of splice it on. Um, so we will take some of this off the spool once again, getting it nice and straight. Since we only need about another inch of our weave, I'm just going to cut two little, maybe nine inch pieces. Alright, so we've got our two lengths here. We need to splice this in somehow with what we have already. So to do that, I'm just going to feed both of them through this loop right here. I'm going to give myself maybe almost halfway in and I will just start wrapping up here as if it had been connected all along. So let's part, start putting in some little swirls. It is going to be a little hard to work with as you're getting these shapes started again because your two wires are going to be trying to come apart from each other. Uh, but just persevere, keep going. And it should even out to where you can work with it a little bit better. I don't like how that is bending because it was had a little residual kink in the wire. I didn't like that so I just went in there and fixed it. squeeze this together a bit because I feel like it's getting a little 
wider across than I wanted it to be, perhaps. So we'll squeeze that together a bit. And now this is probably as long as we need it to be. Yep, so that's just about six and a half inches there. So at this point we want to, once again, think about how we can finish off our wire ends. So let's bring this one up and around here maybe. And then go to the back. And we'll do something with those on the back. And of course this is just flopping around on here as we bind to the little cuff. That will take care of that, so don't worry. And then I'm just looking at this, trying to figure out how I want to finish off these ends. I think I'm going to wrap these up into this space here, perhaps. Maybe bring that all the way around. Can we do that? Seems like we can. And that has actually solidified that little bit in with our previous weave, which I quite like how that is turning out. Um, and then let's just bend that end and tuck it over here, perhaps, so that it can't go anywhere else. Push it on down with my chain nose pliers. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Um, if it will let us. Snip that off in there. And push that in. There we go. And we just have two more ends to deal with. Good progress is being made here. What are we going to do with you guys? How about we take them to the back? That usually seems a good place to start. And let's just wrap them right here, kind of going around and we'll tuck them down into that space there. I think we can I think we can manage that. So let's cut those off right there. And if you can see, I'm just going to push them down into the weave there. Ah, so then Okay, and I'm going to double check all along the length of this, nothing is coming out uh, to where it could stab you. Okay, so now all we have left to do, really, the last step, is to connect this all onto our cuff that we have already made here. Okay, so before I do that, I'm just going to start gently putting in that same bent shape into our weave so that we can start attaching it to the cuff. So just kind of going along here and gently bending it. And one thing I'm realizing here as I get better at this style, uh, and you might as well, is that as you make your um, chaos wrap more cohesive, and layered in on itself so that it can self-support itself uh, and it's one continuous piece ideally. Um, you might even be able to get by with uh, ditching this little thing entirely and just have the bracelet be your little woven portion. That might be entirely possible. 
Uh, but since I added this little bit on the end, I think we are going to need that added stability of having the cuff underneath. So that's kind of what we have here. We're going to place it over our cuff, of course. And we're going to start connecting the two. So pull out your 26 gauge wire. I'm going to take a length of this and we'll be using several lengths as we go. Um, I'm going to cut maybe a 10 inch piece just to start with. I'm going to bend it roughly in half. And I'm going to kind of estimate the center of our cuff and the center of our weave. I'm going to place the two on top of each other so the cuff is behind our design. And I'm just going to look for a place where I can drop this wire, these wire tails through and start capturing kind of the lower portion of the weave hiding wraps of our 26 gauge wire where it's going to connect the two pieces. So looking at it here, I'm seeing a space where we can go through right here and poke that through. So if you can see, I have just dropped it over that space and I'm going to wrap it a few times, feeding it up through that space if there's room which I don't know that there is actually. <laughs> so, and then I'm just going to keep looking for more places along here. Coming up and over, capturing part of our little weave, going back down through. And I'm just going to go all along doing that exact same thing. And you can use your uh, tweezer nose pliers to pull that wire through if that's easier for you. So I'm just starting to capture and attach this all together here. I'm going to continue going with this end until it's all used up. Do the same thing with this end. Um, sometimes it might be helpful to come look at the back and see how the back is looking. We are going to have this little fine wire going over it in places. Okay, so I'm just going to continue going along, finding little places where I can start connecting this all together. Once you get a little segment connected there, go ahead and just double check, as you can see this a little more clearly, um, where your ends are going to line up with the ends of the cuff underneath. And I can see, based on that, that I need to just slide the design a little bit this way. And before you get too much of that length connected, you do want to go along and double check that the ends are going to be meeting in a symmetrical place. You want to have a little bit of these wire cuff ends sticking out past the wrap ends. As you can see here, they stick out just a little bit past. That's going to help with connecting the two pieces together. Um, so just be aware of that, that you want to position this so the center of your weave is centered on the cuff. Um, as you get towards the end of your little wire that you're binding it all together with, we just want to secure this to the baseband. I'm going to take it just around the baseband um, a couple times to kind of secure it in place there, make sure it's not going to pop off. And then, as you can see, I didn't have quite enough to get to the end. That's all right. We can add more in, more of our weaving wire in. Just going to wrap this a couple times there. Make sure it's going to stay on, not pop off anywhere, and we can just snip off that end. Okay, so no big deal. Um, I'm going to switch now to going to this other tail and connecting it this direction. As before, I'm getting a little low on this wire, so I'm going to wrap it just around the, um, the base cuff a couple times so that we can finish it off in a safe way that it's not going to unravel. There we go. And now we do need to add a little bit more weaving wire in because we have not finished connecting. Um, we have not finished connecting our little swirls to the band yet. So let's just cut a few more lengths. We don't need too much more of this. 
for each side. All right, in kind of the same way we did this earlier, I'm going to find a spot where I can drop this wire over. and start wrapping it around. Okay, and as we near the end here, we want to think once again about how we're going to finish this wire off. Let's push that on down. Uh, as before, I'm just going to wrap it several times around only this base wire. I'm going to try and put those wraps all right next to each other. And let's see if we can tuck that last one up in there a little bit. So that we've just tucked that end kind of between the base wire and our weave here to secure it. Okay. We do have a little tail right here that we want to finish off. Alright, so now as you can see I didn't quite succeed in getting the ends of the wrap part portion equal with the ends of the little cuff underneath. So I think to fix that up I'm just going to cut a little bit more off of the cuff underneath to make it symmetrical, and then I will just refile that cut that I just made, um, kind of using my fingers to protect that I don't file on that little design we made. And if your fingers aren't calloused up like mine are, you might want to use um, a vise to hold this or something so you're not actually filing on your fingers. So that is our cuff bracelet design in the kind of chaos weave style. As you can see here, it's very pretty with the raw copper. I did on this other piece go ahead and give it a antique finish using liver of sulfur. If you're curious about how I went about doing that, I have done a tutorial on how I antique copper pieces with liver of sulfur. I will leave a link to that as well. Um, but again, I like how it looks both ways. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. If you did like it, please hit that little thumbs up button below. That really helps the YouTube algorithm so that more people get to see this video. And also leave me a comment if you wound up making this. Let me know how it turned out for you. If you like these wire wrapping jewelry project tutorials and want to see more, go ahead and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that little notification bell to receive all notifications. I do have a lot more ideas planned for future tutorials. I do take into consideration requests, so if you want to leave a little request for a tutorial in the comment section below as well, you may do that. Uh, in the meanwhile, I really hope you guys and your families are staying safe and healthy. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Happy crafting!